Away. A warm welcome to playing the bounce on my word. I'm very excited. Today's guest, or oh, one of the coolest in the business, one of the most talented in the business, and we've got time in his business schedule. So I'm very excited to catch up with Abra, a Springbok, a former man from the Stormers. Your hands and mine for Dylan Lates now in France. <laughs> Here we go, Licker and the man with all the stats. Benedict, what's happening? <laughs> Dylan, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for that. I love introduction, this day, and I appreciate it. <laughs> if I, Benedict and I were chatting about this. If we could make it 10 minutes long, we would. But before we go anywhere, we know you um, a teammate of our fellow South African homeboy, um, Raymond Rule. Just just tell us, what's it like having one of the brass in the camp with you, man? Just to make it feel um, like you're not too far from home. Yo, where do I even start with that guy? There's, <laughs> there's, so, much, there's so much I can talk to you guys about. From his most unprofessional diet to his... His beliefs and his theories he has about life and conspiracies and now, but he's a, he's honestly one of those guys where you want him around just, um, just because of the things, the chat he has, the things he comes up with. Um, but obviously for me personally, it's, it's good to have, um, a guy like him around here. Like you said, um, he's a, he's obviously from back home in South Africa. We, uh, made our Springbok debut together in the same year and played the Stormers for a season together. So just having that familiar face and just someone you can um, uh, uh, speak off the cards to and uh, talk <laughs> talk nonsense about the other players in off the cards to right yes. in front of them is, is lekker. <laughs> I love that you, you, you both at La Rochelle. Um, what's it been like just settling into French culture, a whole new environment, language, food, yeah, everything? Uh, the food is the food is amazing. Um, I, one, I think once you get here, you just realize that like bread isn't just bread for these people. You know what I mean? Like yes. it's a it's a whole different ball game here. Um, there's rules or like. Uh, unwritten rules when it comes to the way you eat a baguette and wow they, they have a one of the weirdest things is they have literally a croissant but it has a bit of like chocolate in it and mm. in one part of france it's called a pan au chocolat and yeah. in the other part of france it's called the chocolatine and they literally argue about it so i, I, I don't know why it's the same yes. thing but one part of France believes it's called this and that. So, uh, besides that, it's good. Like, honestly, um, right now, uh, the, the weather behind me, the sky is, is pretty blue and it looks good, but don't be fooled because, uh, I think it's about five, six degrees at the moment. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. um, it's pretty cold, but you know, obviously it's, it's, uh, it's nice to be in a, in a different country, in a different city. Um, La Rochelle itself is not that big, but it's it's such a welcoming town. It's a very touristy town. Um, I always tell people from Cape Town, it's a bit like playing rugby in Langeban. Lekker. Um, yeah, it's lekker. You know, everyone knows everyone. If yeah. um, if there's something wrong with your with your in your house or your car, you just say, "Oh, uncle, this and that can sort it out." You know, so <laughs> it's a bit like that. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, the people are awesome. The club is amazing, and and they love their rugby, yeah. and so it's uh, I, I I'm I'm loving it there. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Benedict, I love what's it. happening? You, you talk about loving it in 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 France. Like I'm just gonna rewind all the way back to maybe your bishop's days, or maybe before that. I mean, the good days. You, you you what they you what they call a bowler, like a ball player. You know when we say let the boys play. We're not talking yeah. about any other players, but players like you. Like, how did you develop that love for rugby? And how did you manage to 
to keep that as as part of your DNA because you like to play, you like to ship the ball, you like to move, yeah. and it's almost like it was predestined that you go to France because France is the home of Jouet. It's just Jouet. It's <laughs> Jouet, Jouet, too little. Uh, no, I think when I was younger, I, I grew up in a family that absolutely loved rugby. Um, my dad played rugby in Strand, where I'm from, for the club there. He's now, at the moment, the chairman of the club. My cousins played, my uncle played, you know, and obviously my brother <coughs> is playing at Western Province and the Storm is now at the moment. And I think going to Bishops, like, it it um, it sort of just was was like, I got there and I realized, like, this is why I love playing rugby. Um, I, it, it was just a thing of I enjoyed being out on the field with my friends. And it was a Saturday morning and, and everyone gets together and you want to play rugby. You watch, uh, you bunk class on a Friday to watch super rugby. And you watch these guys play and you, you say to yourself, oh, tomorrow morning I'm going to try and do that. And um, I think I really just got the love for it to just it, it, Express yourself and be be your natural self. I think. Is it is it frustrating though? When when, I mean, reality is at this at the top level, where you guys play, you were playing in a Champions Cup final couple couple months ago. It's it's all about winning. It's yeah. Get the points. Whether it's the three points. I mean, I remember Ronan. Ronan after the game, he said, "We're not going to beat Leinster taking three points. You had to score tries." Yeah. And obviously, Leinster almost won, taking three points. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like rugby's become too rigid across the world when you watch games where there's a lot of kicking, there's a lot of take the three points type of thing? Oh, I think we can we can go on for hours about about how I I feel about about that comment. Yeah, um, like I think a couple of years ago, I. I, I I deleted my Twitter now, and it's probably good for myself as well. But I think a couple of years ago. I was watching Craven Week and the guys are taking three points at <laughs> Craven Week. And I'm like, oh, you at Craven Week, you there's scouts everywhere on the field. All they want to do is try and see you play rugby. They don't want to see mm. balls and, and kicking for three. And, you know, they want to see guys expressing themselves, seeing what they can do in a one-on-one -on -one situation or 3v2, you know, things like that. And I think, obviously, in a professional setup, things are a little bit more structured because coaches have plans and there's jobs on the line and certain things like that. Um, so you need to understand when there's a time to be in that box um, and when there's a time to say, listen, we've got our backs against the wall now. Like we, We're going all out. We're trying something, something different here. How, how have you found your, your personal growth as a player since you're in France in terms of your creativity, your freedom of movement and still just expressing yourselves like the Dylan Lates that, that we know? Um, first of all, let me tell you, Dylan, I've had to become a lot more aware of, of where the space is because there's some big boys running around there in France. <laughs> so... Um, if I make if I make one one wrong decision, yeah, I'm I'm running into a big couple of Fijians or some yeah. French boys lining up to to smash me. Um, but but I think personally, I've had a lot of you know just good discussions with with our our coach. I mean, he was a, a, a goat of rugby in his time. Is you know, Ronan's been been around one and all. You know, so. It it it's um it's helped me to to come here and at the start when I came here I thought ah oh, French rugby, you know I'm gonna be just like running from my own line and you yeah. know that sort of thing but he sort of got me into to a uh a, a mentality to to just not I, I always try to be on the ball as much as I possibly can and he sort of just tried to get me to think about where I want to be involved and how I can execute 100% instead of having touching the ball 10 times but only executing one or two. How can I be better at getting on the ball five times but executing four or five out of five? I love that. You you sound more mature. It's like we've we yeah, watched you blossom and grow. 
<laughs> that's good news. That that's good news. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've. I, I'm going to wax lyrical here quickly. You've you you've probably got the greatest try assist in Super Rugby history. <laughs> I mean, SP Murray will be remembered as the guy who scored that try. But that was a great game. The Chiefs scored a, yeah. an absolute stunner, and then you guys decided. You know what? You at Newlands, we are going to show the Newlands faithful. Like, walk me through that try. What was going through your head? Was it a fluke? It's a safe space. Ah, oh, hundred percent a fluke. I'm, yeah. I'm not even <laughs> denying that. First of all, I've never, I've never ever tried it again. Not even a training where there's no cameras. But, like, honestly, I always say, like, people always ask me about the past and that, and I say, like, the reason I felt. I had to make up because like I made a horrible read on defense and like <laughs> so if the pass actually if the Chiefs play a pass to his, his teammates who was running short, they would have scored. So in that moment Cheslin actually saved me. And um yeah, I just honestly I just remember just sprinting after the ball and as I was falling, um looking back and, and, and I don't know why SP was running there to be honest with you. I don't know where he came from. But I could see like him sort of on the on the left hand side. And um I caught the ball in my right hand. So I didn't know any other way of how I was gonna get the ball to him. And I just thought, well <laughs> I might as well just try this. And um yeah I'm I'm lucky it worked. Dude, we, we love your energy, man. We, we're busy wrapping up shortly before before we let you go. Just from my side, what's the what's the coolest thing that you picked up on in French culture that you can't wait to tell the people back at home about? <laughs> um, it's the French slang. Honestly, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. You honestly in two, three months' time there's a new word and they just give us a word. Give like, us a word. Give us a word. Um at the at the moment it's it's uh, gas de oof. So gas de everything oof. gas de oof. So everything that's like crazy is basically like oof. So they'll be like uh that like the night was crazy. So I say oof. Like everything okay. is just oof at the moment. Um okay. or like if it's if it's cool, say shwet. Um that's the, the, the I'm gonna tell that to moment. a taxi gachi to, I'm gonna tell that to a taxi gachi tomorrow. Is it fine? Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. Say shwet. Like it, honestly, the the slang just like it just rolls every two three months. There's a new word. Everyone latches onto it and you move with it. <laughs> Love it. You yeah. stole one of the cool kids. That's great. <laughs> I mean, before I wrap up, I, I don't want to freak you out here, but I'm very curious. Let's say you have to retire in five or ten years' time. Do you have a retirement plan? I mean, who's been the most influential coach you've ever worked with, and would you go into coaching? Because you probably have a different outlook on coaching, whereas you believe in in, in playing, uh, playing. you believe in playing, throwing the ball around. Would you ever go into coaching? I, I, I have thought about it, um, but it all, for me, it just depends how the next phase of my life goes. If, um, you know, obviously I'm married and no kids yet, but we obviously want to start a family, so... We'll see how that that phase goes, but no plans just of yet to go into coaching. But if there's one coach I'd love to coach with, uh, probably yeah. Davis Neyman. He's um, yeah, he's he's phenomenal. Nice, nice, great, yeah. great local plug there. Good choice, good choice, good choice, good choice, good choice. <laughs> uh, Davis Neyman's magic. He's the one. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Appreciate Cheers, your man. time. Keeping amazing. Right. Are we? There we go. Just like in rugby, you too can learn how to play the bounce in life. We call it the change science. You can learn all about it over here. The change exchange. Go. Don't look at me. Change exchange. Get going. Are we?